Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Samer, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the tabulizer package in R. In summary, the tabulizer package allows you to extract tables from PDF files. If you've worked in Python before, this is very similar to the Camelot package. The problem here though, is that with this package, it seems like a lot of, problem, a lot of people are having problems with using this package because it's giving them some Java errors. And I personally was running into this and it was this specific error in here, which was error in .jcall R Java tools. Uh, so it seems like this is a Java problem, although I do have Java installed. So after looking through the stack overflow form, it turns out that it's actually recommended to use a previous version of the Java development kit. So in today's video, I wanted to show you how to install that Java development kit and uh, be able to get it up and running to show you that this package can actually work with a previous edition of the Java development kit. So let's get started. Now, if you already have Java installed on your machine, I highly recommend that you uninstall it uh, just so that there is no uh, confusion between the versions. Um, however, if you do not have it installed, then you can consider this as your first installation of Java. So in order to install the proper JDK version, you're actually going to access it from a website called Azul. So you're gonna type in Azul Java, and then you're gonna click on the uh, Java download. And then you're gonna click on the Zulu section over here, and then you're gonna scroll down, click on download now. And then you're going to click for the Java version. You wanna click on eight, Java eight. And then you wanna scroll through, through to your operating system. In my case, I'm running on a Windows machine, 64-bit, uh, and then I'm gonna download it as a zip file. So I'm gonna give it a few minutes as it downloads, and then I will be right back. Okay, so the installation has been complete. So I will go ahead and uh, click on show in folder, and then I am gonna go uh, right click, and I'm going to extract all, and I'm gonna extract it to a specific location. So ideally speaking, you wanna put this in the program files section. Uh, you can put it anywhere you want, but that's typically where Java gets downloaded. So I'm gonna click on browse, uh, go into my local disk, go into the program files, and I will create a new folder in here, and I'm gonna call it uh, Azul Java. And I'm gonna select that folder, and then I'm gonna click on yeah, select folder, click on extract, uh, continue, and then it's going to just extract a bunch of files, and I will be back when this is complete. All right, so it's finished extracting, and it is located in the file we specified. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rename this to uh, JDK. And I'm gonna click on continue. And then if you just click on it, it has the same contents that you would find in the Java development kit if you were to download from Oracle or something. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna set the environment variables and the environment path. In order to do that, we're gonna uh, go into the settings. Then we're gonna go into find a setting, type in environment, and then click on edit the system environment variables. Click on environment variables. Um, and what we wanna do is we wanna uh, place it in the path, but before then, we will need to go back to the Azul Java, click on JDK, and then click on bin, and then take this path right here. We're gonna copy it. And then I am gonna go into the path over here at the bottom, double click on it, and then I'm gonna add it right here in the bottom. So I'm just gonna double click over here and I'm just gonna paste it and then I'm gonna press okay. And then I also wanna add a, a variable as well in here called Java home. So I'm just gonna call it Java underscore home. And then I'm going to paste that path, but I will remove the bin section of it. So I'm gonna click on okay. Um, so it's in there, that's fine. Um, and then I want to go ahead and click on okay. And then I'm gonna click on okay. And now uh, let's see if Java has been installed. So I'm gonna go to the command prompt and I'm gonna type in Java dash version. And it shows that it's actually installed with the open JDK version 1.80. Uh, so it's been successfully installed. And now let's go back to R and let's start um, installing the relevant packages and uh, see if tabulizer is going to work. So first we are gonna to need to install the remotes package and the R Java packages. So we're gonna do that by typing in install.packages. Um, gonna use the remotes. 
and then also I'm going to install the R Java package. So I'm going to run that. And it's just going to take a little bit of time for these two to run. And yep, there you go. It's already done. Then what I want to do is I want to uh, load them in as well. So I'm just going to say library remote and then library R Java. So run the remotes, run the R Java. R Java says it cannot be determined from the home registry. So let me see if I can actually restart my R Studio and see if that will do it for me. So if I were to load in the remotes, load in R Java, and there we go. So I just had to do a quick restart for R Studio. And then I will go in and I will install the tabulizer package. Now, uh, there is a specific way of installing the R, the tabulizer package. So if you go into the GitHub page, um, this would be the command line that you would need from there. This is for the 64 bits when 64 bit windows. So this would be relying on the install GitHub function from the remotes package. And essentially this is going to download two packages, the tabulizer jars and the tabulizer package. So I'm just going to run that. And then it's just going to download uh, those packages for us from GitHub. So we're just gonna give it a few seconds and it looks like we are good to go. And then now we can actually load the library. So I believe we only need to down, uh, load in the tabulizer uh, package. So we run that and it loads in just fine. And now we're gonna just load the uh, PDF file. And the way we do that is I'm just gonna call it, um, in this case, the, the PDF file that we're working with is going to be right here in the tabulizer section, it's a salary PDF table that is uh, that is in this format right here. So this is the file that I'm loading in. And since I'm in that directory, I can just simply load it in. So I'm just gonna say salary table is equal to uh, salary table.pdf. Then I'm gonna run it. And then to extract the tables, you're just gonna use the extract tables function. And you can do that by typing in extract tables, then pass in the salary table. Oops, salary table. Let me run that. Uh, system cannot find the specified path. Oh, I do have to actually set in the working directory path. So I will go ahead and do that. So it's in the tabulizer. Go ahead and set it right here. And then let's go ahead and extract the tables. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna look through the entire document and scan for all of those tables. Um, but the cool thing about this function is that you can actually specify uh, the pages that you want to look at. And that's a, that's an example that uh, maybe perhaps we can look at. Uh, so since this is taking a little bit of time, I figured maybe we can look at the table and let's just assume for our, for our sake, we want to look, we want to extract the table from the second page. So we can go back and I'm just going to stop this for now. And I'm actually going to specify the pages and set it equals to two. Um, and then once I click on uh, run for that, it will actually extract the table for us. So what you could do is then you could uh, put this in a data frame. So you could just say, you can pipe this into as a data frame. Um, and then if you were to, to run that, uh, well, we actually do need to load in the tidyverse package. And then we can actually run that and it's going to load in, in a, in a data frame, just like that. So yeah. And actually I believe there is an output function over here and then we can actually put it as a data frame in here and then also pipe it into the data frame. And I'm just going to call this uh, DF and I'm going to run this. And then if you look at the DF, you're actually going to see that everything's been extracted. Um, so that would be the way to go about it is to use the output parameter, set it equals to data frame and then uh, pipe it into it as data frame uh, function. And it got us all the data. And then of course we could, uh, create maybe uh, some edits here to where we remove the dollar sign from the first row. We're going to set that equals to 
uh, df one, and then I'm just going to pipe it into an str remove all, and I want to remove the dollar sign from each one, and then I also want to trim so that we remove any spacing. So I'm just going to run that. If you click on df, you're going to notice that's a much cleaner table right now, and it's exactly the same table that you would see in the salary PDF. So there you have it. That's how you get the tabulizer package set up. Um, I have yet to explore this package, so I'm hoping that uh, sometime in the foreseeable future I could create a tutorial on working with the tabulizer package. But I hope this gets you up and running with it. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.